a lady named Elizabeth was in a nursing home. She was suffering from a debilitating disease where little by little she lost all use of her limbs and really kind of of her, of her body. It was deteriorating. She developed a very good relationship with one of the attendants. And so the attendant would come in and say hello to Elizabeth on a frequent basis. They would have great conversations. And so this went on for a couple of months. One day when the attendant went in, the health aide, Elizabeth said, I've lost use of my arms and my legs. I can't move them anymore. But I'm very grateful because I can still move my neck. Well, a few more months went by, and in one of their conversations, the attendant heard from Elizabeth when Elizabeth said, you know, today I realized I can't move my neck anymore, but I'm very grateful because I can hear and I can see. And so the attendant looked at her and said, well, you know, Elizabeth, she was amazed at this woman because for someone in such a, a state of deterioration of her physical self, she was inspired. And so she said, you know, Elizabeth, she said, what's going to happen when you are no longer able to hear or to see? Is there anything you'll be grateful for? And she said, yes. She said, I'll be very grateful that you come to visit me. I think there's something very beautiful about that because in the midst of whatever suffering there may be, there is always something to be grateful for. We may have to look a little bit harder because some blessings don't come in huge, big ways. But when we look all around us, we're surrounded with great blessings. The word gratitude has a root. It comes from gracia in Latin, and that means grace or gift. So when we are having a sense of gratitude, it's in response really to the grace of God to the gifts that God has given to us. Meister Eckert was a philosopher, a, a religious a professional, I guess you would say, a minister back in the 13th century. He had a really beautiful saying about giving thanks. He said, if the only prayer you ever said was thank you, it would be enough. And God really wants to hear that thank you from each one of us whether it be in the small ways or whether it be in the big ways. Our gospel reading today, the first reading as well, speaks of gratitude. Specifically in the gospel, there's two miracles that occur here. There's the very evident one, the obvious one, that there was a physical healing of the ten lepers. And that's something really that's remarkable. Only Jesus could do. But there's a second healing that takes place here, and that is with the one who came back. And that is that he was healed spiritually. And Jesus said to him, your faith has saved you. So the miracle there is that of salvation. Two key lines in this gospel are, he was a Samaritan, and your faith has saved you. He was a Samaritan, that's something that's different because of the fact that Samaritans were considered other. They were considered on the outside, on the fringe, not accepted. That by birthright, it was only the Jewish people that were saved. But actually, it's something that Luke is very common for saying that salvation's open to all people. So this is a very Lucan type of gospel in terms of how salvation is given freely as a gift to this man who recognizes it, who thanks Jesus. And so the Lord said to him, your faith has saved you. Here we see faith in action. We see not just faith being saved, but we also see that because he went up to Jesus and said, thank you, there was an actual action that was done. So faith and acts, that's how we also achieve the gift of salvation one day. Faith being given by God and actions of our own free will. So we hear this about gratitude, and it could be a good chance for us to think about our own sense of gratitude. You know, this weekend, I'd say there's probably a relief for many. I know some still don't have power in our area, but you know, basically around 11 o'clock Thursday night, that storm 
named after our seminarian Matthew, by the way, <laughs> kind of took a little jog to the right. And you know, it, it was you know, not something that, thank goodness, that we were spared, others were not. And so it's kind of something that we have to be careful about because we want to be grateful or thank you that, well, all I had to do was pick up some branches or maybe cut a tree down. But, you know, at least it wasn't having to pick up the shambles of our home. Because some people, even in our own diocese today, like 40 miles away, they're dealing with that. And I think it's good to remember that. To be thankful and grateful Maybe that you didn't lose power, but to the person who still this morning maybe is either in a hotel or, you know, was sweating all night last night, I think it's important to bring humanity together. And so it's important to make sure we pray for those maybe who did not have those same blessings. Of course, let's not forget our brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in humanity in Haiti, who hundreds of people died from this hurricane. It was devastating to those people. A group of people, a, a civilization, a population of people who, they've just suffered immensely on that island. They need our prayers. Also, we can say, what is our sense of gratitude just every day when we wake up in the morning? What's like one of the first thoughts that comes to our mind? I hope it's, thank you, Lord, for the gift of another day. If it's, oh, I have a pain in my right fingernail, you know, we're really not that grateful. You know, we need to think about the bigger picture, like Elizabeth, to look a little bit bigger and beyond and say, well, there's something I can be grateful for. There's times where maybe we don't say actually thank you to somebody. Let's say we're on I-4, and there's that incredible mess that's called I-4 Ultimate. I hope it's ultimate. That's all I can say. I hope it is because I don't know what else can be done. It's, you know, going to be six years of pain and suffering. It better be ultimate. But, you know, you're driving on I-4 and someone lets you in. You know, in that place where suddenly, well, I can't, there's no sh shoulder and I need to get over and I need to get off on my exit. It's like to just say and hopefully in our heart to say thank you to that person. They may not hear us but to have that sense of gratitude. So we have big, we have small. But it's so important to know that gratitude is part of who we are and it's giving graciousness not just to God but to other people. It's the right thing to do. And in our great electronic culture, we've lost a little bit of that sense. It's very easy to just text someone, thanks, you know, appreciate that. You know, especially I know many grandparents, it drives them crazy. Children, make your grandparents happy. Write them a thank you note, please, because it's one of the best things that you can do. If you want to get a gift next Christmas that's even more, make sure you write the thank you note this Christmas. It's something that's so important. It goes a long way. The little thanks for the gift. It, it's cheesy. It just doesn't quite cut it. Better yet, too, besides the note, tell them. People love to hear that. Thank you. They love to feel that they were giving something and that it was received with graciousness. It was received in a positive kind of way. Because one of the sicknesses of our current times is called entitlement. And that is when people just expect that when the Christmas gift maybe arrives a day late, it's like, well, did they forget me? Well, that's called entitlement. Entitlement is, you know, well, I deserve this. I don't have to give thanks. I should just get this. Well, we have to be very careful of that as people. It doesn't matter what our economic status is. Entitlement is a sickness that just goes through all strata. So today, as we hear this gospel in our hearts, say thank you to the Lord. Think maybe of three things or three people in your life besides the obvious. Go a little deeper of how God is touching your life today. Or maybe think of a person that you need to go to and thank them for something. What a beautiful thing to be able to see, you know, a thousand people, over a thousand people in our church, to go out of their way today and say thank you to someone. When we're over at Publix and, you know, the person takes the cart out, I know it's their job, but to say thank you so much for doing that, it goes a long 
way. It's huge, actually, to look someone in the eye and say thank you. It's probably two of the most important words we can put together. I've said before, the three most important words are I love you, the two most important words are thank you, and the most important word is we, so that we do things together. But today, hopefully, we can be in that spirit of Elizabeth in the nursing home, to be in that spirit of Meister Eckhart, to give a prayer to God. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can simply be thank you.